Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is George Dole, and this is my sort of my TED Talk audition tape on how to get an A in algebra in any school in California or just about any school in the United States. In, this is my first time, so I'm reading from a text. In the 1967 movie, The Graduate, Dustin Hoffman was told the, quote, secret uh, to success in business, end quote, at a party by a middle-aged white man. He said this, I've got only one word for you, son, plastics. My father performed the same scene with me shortly after I graduated from Villanova University. His one word for me was fiber optics. Okay, that's two words, maybe hyphenated. My one word secret for you is this, ready? Algebra retests and glasses. Okay, that's four words. Let me explain. But first, a little backstory development. In 2004, I realized that as a freelance quantitative researcher in Los Angeles, with over 20 university credits in mathematics, I could teach anywhere in California as an emergency mathematics teacher while pursuing a second master's degree in education. I already had a master's degree in political science, so I knew I could easily do another 10 classes to get this one. I had over 20 uh, math, credits, math credits, so I felt sure I could get quickly hired. I thought statistical analysis in grad school, uh, teaching statistical analysis in grad school as a teaching assistant to pay for my full scholarship, uh, I thought was subst uh, substantial background for teaching math in any high or middle school, and continuing doing freelance market research after school hours. Boy, was I wrong. When I applied to the Los Angeles Unified School District, they were eager to accept my application. However, LAUSD only accepted 19 math credits, so I needed to take a five credit Algebra II course at Santa Monica College to get over the 20 credit minimum. However, I did it. I wanted that one credit bad enough to take a five credit math course almost 20 years after leaving university. I bought a small booklet in the bookstore about how to do your best in math class, I followed every advice given. I got my vision checked and got classes for the first time, sat in the middle of the front row, answered every uh, question in every chapter, recorded the class, and replayed it between classes. I went daily to the math assistant tutor sessions where two tutors sat from four to nine uh, every day and had a sign-up list for students. I put my name in both lists constantly and went to whichever tutor uh, called my name and showed me showed them whatever question I was having problems with. The math tutor sessions were my major part-time job during the work week. My Algebra II uh, class of about 35 students dwindled each week to a final nine students by the fifth and final test. I only ever saw one other student who occasionally visited the math tutors. After the fourth test, my average was 96. In the end, I was not only the highest A, but the oldest. I was twice older than most of the other students. I interviewed several schools that needed mathematics teachers and finally accepted a teaching assignment with Stephen M. White Middle School in Carson, California. I must tell you about a prior interview I had at Daniel Webster Middle School in West LA near Santa Monica. The female principal made the comment to me that if you don't love the children you teach, you should not teach them. I thought it was strange that I should need to love kids who are learning mathematics. When our family moved to our home in Eastern Pennsylvania from Citrus, Mass, I needed to take an IQ test to see which level of course difficulty I would be placed, A, B, C, or D team. Uh, I, my joke is that I was diagnosed, diagnosed with an IQ of over 150, but that did not stop the school placing me in the slowest D team. I got the one and only D I ever received in secondary school in handwriting uh, and my mother fought to have me placed in the higher A team. However, the school would only put me in the B team. When I took Algebra 1, I earned one of the highest A grades. My middle school principal asked those children who earned high A's in Algebra to tutor kids during some of our free periods who were having trouble with Algebra. I tutored some kids and thought it was fun to tutor something I found easy to do. Ever since my Algebra 1 class success, I did not need any future math teacher. It did not matter if the teacher was good or bad. I did all the problems and completed uh, and competed with unseen Russian kids who I was told were excellent in all their math courses. I also had a friendly competition with a few other classmates who, like me, 
almost always got over 100% grades in math by answering all the questions correctly and getting most of the extra credit questions correct. I say all this to show that I somewhat understand the trauma of getting only one D in a course and understand some kids have trouble with mathematics. Since eighth grade, I usually tutored some, someone every year in some type of math, usually statistics. At Stephen and White Middle School, my other three algebra teacher colleagues had diverse backgrounds. One teacher was a laid off aerospace engineer, a second was a former Hungarian economist, and the third was an actual formally trained teacher with a BA degree in education. The engineer and the Hungarian economist both had master degrees in education because they too, like me, were emergency math teachers. One LAUSD policy is to remove all the above average students from the first year teachers, or maybe just emergency math and English teachers, and distribute them to other veteran teachers. That meant I had no Garrison Keeler, Lake Wobegon, uh, above average students. In fact, I had the opposite. I had all, bo all below average math students. Some even counted on their fingers in quizzes and tests. My principal, Mr. Noble, then expected me to recreate a normal distribution of final grades with below average student abilities. I was also assigned one totally non-English speaking Spanish student who did, not understand, uh, who did not understand a word of what I was saying. I paired him with a smart looking bilingual girl who explained what I said to him. Luckily we had a mathematics uh, master mentor teacher, Nick Agubwehe, PhD, originally from Africa, who visited Santa, uh, Stephen White Middle School two or three times weekly. The other three veteran teachers did not need nor request his mentoring skills, but I begged him to walk into my class unannounced whenever he was on campus. He usually helped me during the first period classes so I could see his techniques and hopefully duplicate them for the remaining four classes. Nick is now the Los Angeles Unified School District Mathematics Coordinator for all middle schools. On test one, the mean average for all my students who started with me in September was, not, was 67 out of 100%. After I got the test back, I became very anxious. At the weekly Friday Algebra Department's teachers meeting, I voiced my concern about the low scoring tests. All three of my colleagues assured me that I should not expect to make any A or B students. They all said that most of my students would get D or F grades. This depressed and scared me. At the first LA Unified School District new teachers meeting, at monthly meeting, we were all told that no human being remembers more than 75% of any, of any new idea. So we were strongly encouraged to repeat any important ideas in several, uh, several times in class, during, several times during class. Uh, many children who could not see the blackboard clearly were uh, given, clearly were given eye tests, which revealed that they needed glasses immediately to function properly in all their school classes, not just math. However, they did not receive glasses during the school year. I want to demonstrate the idea of remembering something, knowing something only 75% if you know new idea. So two ideas here. If, if you learn something and you do remember the maximum amount, 75%, this is what's happened in LA Unified School District. Students take the test and maybe they get the highest amount of, of a grade, 75%, because they've learned as much as they can with new ideas but they don't get a chance to repeat the class. So the next time they had to take a test, they're gonna get 75% of this, which is 56%. Three quarters of three quarters. And then it just gets worse with every test. And you'll see that in my results that I'll show. But if you retest students, and they get 75% the first time, and you retest them, they kind of know this, and then they get 75% theoretically of the next, of the 25% they got wrong the first time, they could get up to 94%. And I'll show that re those results in my charts that I have here. So this is the idea that we were taught in the first monthly teachers meeting for new teachers at uh, LAUSD. And it works great, they tell us to repeat in the class, but they never told us that we could actually repeat the tests. Some people now do some of the quizzes. I do the test. It's less time consuming and more effective. Um, I returned to my classes invigorated after the, the monthly meeting, although it disturbed me to think that most of my effort was wasted on children, some of whom counted on their fingers after each chapter quiz, 
After each chapter, we gave a quiz and also four quarterly tests. The test number two mean average was 64% out of 100. The first parent-teacher uh, association meeting followed the second test results. My colleagues assured me that I was doing everything I could to teach algebra correctly. They told me that they had similar results with no A's or B's and lots of D's and F's. They said there was nothing more I could do to improve the situation. I confidently entered my first PTA meeting and told the parents I was doing all I could to teach their children properly. Almost all of them were angry with me and told me that I was a bad teacher, uh, that, I could, that why was I not able to teach their children algebra. Many were screaming at me to explain why I had so many F and D students. I told them that the other veteran teachers had similar results. That didn't stop them from screaming at me. Then I wondered if teaching enumerate, or a nice way of saying math idiot children, was not such a good idea. The PTA meeting was the worst, most humiliating meeting I had ever had to that date or even to now. The next day I mentioned to the seventh grade counselor uh, the, my PTA fiasco, and he advised me that if I retested the poor performing children, they would improve. He said that if I did not retest them, I would hear all their poor students crying from November to mid-June. Although I estimated that I was grading my 130 test at two to three minutes, which is about four and a half hours to six and a half hours, retests would only double that unpaid work. But I was desperate to stop the falling mean average test grades and stop the children complaining about their poor grades, and also stop the teachers screaming at me in PTA meetings. Also, I got periodic evaluations by Dr. Noble and one of the assistant principals. Funny, neither of them mentioned anything about my being able to retest the students. Then an amazing thing happened with the third uh, test. The mean average of all the tests went up to 70. Test number four results were even more shocking since their mean was 87. The final mean average of all the tests of the quizzes in the fall before the, spring, the, before the Christmas break was 73. Since test grades were 50% of the test uh, grade and since the quiz grades improved also with the test grades, I only gave those who did poorly on the test the option to retest. Almost everyone retested was, uh, everyone allowed to retest actually took the chance to do the retest. As I said before, the smart kids were taken out of my class. All those smart kids, very few of them, if any, were getting over C. And they came back to me between classes after they heard their friends were getting Bs and As, and they, they begged me to let them back into my classes. I told them that as a first year teacher, I had no authority to transfer them back into my class. Ironically, I saw the other teachers' classes, and I could, by uh, watching their classes uh, between my classes, I realized they were better teachers than I was. They were veterans. They did it for many years. This is the first time I'm teaching a group of 13-year-old kids as a group of 35 people. I did teach in graduate school, but those were uh, university students, and it was a big class of 100 people, but those people were motivated to take the class and do well. Here I've got 13-year-old kids, first year of puberty. They don't care about my class at all. Uh, it was the first time for me teaching groups of 13-year-old children who were, in their, as I said, their first year of puberty. Nobody cared about the quadratic formula, and which was really just an excuse to do Algebra 1. All that year, I had only one of the 30-minute lunches which were allowed, since I needed to walk across the campus, stand in line, eat my lunch, and return in 30 minutes, which was impossible. So I decided to bring my lunch and have a tutor session during lunch for anybody who wanted to see me. A couple of students came in from time to time. By Christmas, I had seven A's, 26 B's, 49 C's, 32 D's, and 16 F's, which is, which is this. Kind of like a normal distribution of grades, but when I started out, they pretty much took that away from me. So I had people that were, at best, mediocre, and at worst, just not, just bad math students. Uh, my subsequent PTA meetings were relatively calm, and some of the parents actually apologized for their out outburst to me in the first PTA meeting. Uh, then in mid-December, my fiance, uh, Irina, told me that she was returning to Moscow to live permanently since the economy in, in Russia at that time in 2005 had improved dramatically. At that point, I decided to move to Moscow to live and marry Irina. 
Uh, I couldn't stop retesting my students since I would not ever teach again in LA USD. So my performance in this course would be really nothing, mean nothing to me or to them. However, the survey researcher background of mine was curious to see how far I could improve my students. I kept retesting all D and F students and got continuously improved results. The spring fin final grades in June for all my students surprised me. Test number one in January, mean average 77. Test number two, mean average 78. Test number three, 77, mean average. Test number four, 82. The final cumulative mean average for all 121 students who started with me in September 2005 was 78. The immediate midpoint grade was 79, and with the, the mode uh, was, with the most, occurring, most, most highest occurring score was 85. So uh, spring, fall semester grades, this, fall semester grades, the tests. Spring semester grades. I have a chart to put these both together. Spring semester grades. Mean, mode, and median. Average mean, 78. Median, 79. Highest frequency of grades, 85. Seven students got 85. Okay, when I nominated one of my highest ranking students, 97%, for the Stephen M. White Middle, Stephen M. White uh, Award uh, for the, one of the highest scoring algebra students, uh, one of my colleagues asked me if I really had any A students. I said, yes, don't you? That's when I first realized that the other three teachers probably had no A or B students in the classes. Here in Moscow, oh, I forgot to tell you I'm in Moscow. Uh, here in Moscow, um, most Russian state universities allow retesting for students. So I don't, I never had a retest in any test in any course I ever had. Um, but they allow it here, especially if it's a very hard course and people have the, the curve is very low. Ironically, the lowest, store, low, lowest scoring student was best friends with one of the highest scoring students. I asked the student why he did not do any homework or participate in class, even though anyone could see that he was above average intelligence. He said that he had a lot of family problems and asked me if I wanted to know what these problems were. He said that kind of sarcastically. I said I was only a math teacher and that there were counselors and a psychologist on campus for him to talk to. I apologize that I could not do any better uh, than that suggestion for him. Uh, when graduation time rolled around, I participated in the graduation ceremony but felt sad that I had only let F and D students retest. I should have let anyone retest, even A students. Question. Would you like to have a cardiologist operating you on your damaged heart with only a 91 or a 98 in anatomy and physiology? I'd like a 98 myself. So parents, if you live in California or any state that allows retesting students, you should demand that the teachers in your children's schools uh, do so. Realize that the teachers are unionized and the principal is part of the management, so he or she has very few tools he can use to force the teachers to do anything that they don't want to do. Even if, in your state, even if you're in a state that does not allow retesting, it's, I can't see why you can't ask the administrator, school top administrator, to do so. I don't think you need a law, you just have to need permission. You have two options to, to uh, parents to help your children get better math education. First, go to the PTA meetings and pressure math teachers to retest children and give them the better of the two grades, which almost always is the retest grade. When I retested, I told the students, you had to show me the work. If you just say the answer again, forget it. You have to show the work. I see the work. I give you partial credit. Usually, almost always, the retest was a higher grading test. So if they show the work, nobody can memorize algebra. I did a thorough uh, uh, evaluation, thorough uh, uh, going over of the test, but I don't think anybody, especially these kids, could not uh, memorize algebra. I can't memorize algebra. I can understand concepts, which is what I taught. But if you understand the concepts, objective classes, you remember it probably almost for life. Subject to things like English and history and psychology, sociology, takes a little more time to develop. Writing, but math, if you know two plus two is four, nobody can tell you otherwise. Um, the other thing you can do, uh, second, if teachers won't retest and the school district allows you to relate, relocate your children to a school that explicitly and actively allows retesting, then you should do so. 
As the well-known Scottish economist Adam Smith noted in The Wealth of Nations, when a teacher's wages are connected to the performance, you almost always see improved teacher and student performance. Principles. You are like the sports coaches who are scapegoated for poor performance in schools. Although you can't force teachers to retest students, you can use my results at Stephen M. White Middle School to demonstrate uh, that only retesting major tests can greatly improve almost any child's performance in objective courses like math, physics, chemistry, and biology. Good luck. Children, uh, if your school is allowed to retest by permission of your school su superintendent, you should use this retesting tool to avoid getting an a F or D and possibly earn a B or an A. Good luck for you. Teachers, you may think that retesting will involve a lot of uncompensated time uh, to do this. Just ask students to show all your work and you will uh, to show you all the work and, and in every, uh, after a thorough review of the test you give. You will see immediate and significant results at any point in your class, September, December, January, or even May. If you don't love your students enough to believe that they can do quality work uh, given a second chance, then at least care about them a little to give them this second chance. If you don't care if your students do well or poorly, then probably you should find a, a new occupation and not ruin the lives of young, teenage, young teenagers who are affected very negatively whenever they unnecessarily get a D or F grade. Good luck. I say good luck because Seneca, 2,000 years ago, said luck is when opportunity meets preparedness. I've given you some tips as to how you can improve your students' uh, grades, whether you're a parent, a student, teacher, or administrator. One last comment. Uh, in my class, just before graduation, one of my female students, uh, she was one of the A students, asked me if I would miss my uh, algebra students. I was unprepared for the question, and I don't quite remember what I said. I probably was polite and said, as a reflex answer, that I would miss them. But in retrospect, they retaught me what Charles Swindle said um, many years ago. Attitude is the most important one-string instrument we have to play. These kids had no reason to do well in the class, but I showed them that they could do well. 13 years old, quadratic formula, just there's no reason for them to, to know this stuff. But they did it because they saw they could do it, and some of them wanted to do well. And I was really surprised. I could not have anticipated which student would have been uh, excellent students and which one wouldn't. So, um, so I have to, I, so, okay, so it's just, it's just, you have to give the kids a second chance. Uh, a couple of quick charts that I made, and I'm in Moscow. I, unfortunately, my, my office package was a cracked English version, so I could not um, do a lot with my Excel uh, programs. So I showed you the spring semester uh, test grades and the fall semester test grades. Show that again. I'm going to put these two together. I did. When I put them together, I get this. Two normal distribution curves. One is actually skewed higher. The blue one is the fall semester, which looks kind of normal, but remember they took that away from me, so I rebuilt that. And the red one is skewed higher. Its mean is higher than the fall. These are all the same students that stayed with me the whole year. I did not include students that, that left or came late or, or um, ones that left were out of the, the, uh, the cohort. But uh, these are all the students that stayed with me. So if they stayed with me, uh, they did better in the second semester than they did in the first. And you can see my Fs went from 16 Fs to 5 Fs. I only had one failing student in each class. My Ds went from 32 to 20. 25. My C's went from 50 to 35. Now that's below the midpoint. B's went from 26 to 34. A's went from 7 to 19. Very dramatic improvement. So also in the midpoint, you can see in the, by putting the, the grades from low to high, this is this is failing, this is 60. And you can see, except for five people, everybody is above a D. And the parents, when it, some of these parents, they were so happy just to get their kids a D so they could pass eighth grade formally because you have to have uh, 
only two or three failing grades in D2 formally participate in graduation from eighth grade. They were so happy to get their kids at least above a D, but only had five out of the 120 kids that failed, which is tremendous. I'm actually, in a way, more happy, uh, happier that I had only uh, five Fs, rather, as opposed to more, more A's. Because it's great to have A's, but it's also fantastic to reduce the number of Fs. Because you have to train these people. These are people that are going to be running society for you and me as we get older. So I don't want everybody to be flipping hamburgers. I want people to be, uh, have enough math ability to progress. And algebra class is, algebra one is the first place where they, they hit some serious math, and which is going to uh, be the foundation for all their other maths and programming. Now you have to be able to program. And it's nice to be able to understand algebra to be able to program effectively. Yes, kids five, six, seven years old are programming, but they're not going to be, they're not going to, most kids are going to have to have some sort of math background to understand this. So these, uh, put these charts together. Um, let's see if I need anything. I think I've covered just about everything here. Um, I think I did. Oh, here are the tests. Here are the, the tests together in the back. So the red line is the fall semester, the average, as you can see, was kind of a little lower. Uh, but I, the last test for the fall was kind of high. But the, the average for the, all the students that stayed together with me, 71. The blue is the spring semester, which started out higher. We didn't, didn't get below 77. And then 77, 78, 77, 82, average 79. So you can see dramatic improvement uh, with this. And it was my first year teaching a group of people in 20 years. I've never taught a large group of people anything over a couple of kids at, a, at one time. So teaching 30, 35 kids at a time, um, algebra, uh, was a brand new experience for me. I knew the math well, and luckily had a, a math mentor to help me with this. And um, uh, otherwise, it would, it would have been a total disaster. It was like playing Russian roulette with a fully loaded gun, uh, which is what I felt like it was for a while. Because you can, as you can see, the, the line of the tests were going down. They were going down. Then, after I retested, they went up. So kind of dramatic. The second semester, kind of flat. Everything pretty good. Pretty good. If I, I wonder what I would have had if I allowed C, B, and A students to retest. I probably would have had no Fs. Uh, I would have been able to drag out one person that didn't want to do, do uh, uh, work. Uh, probably this is the spring semester final grades. I probably would have had no Fs. I would have had much fewer Ds and Cs, and I've had dramatically more Bs and As. This is already skewed high with Bs and As. So I, my average, my mean average for this was 79. It was almost a B. The mean average for the, the whole group at, in June was 79. It's almost a B. Had I been able to retest C's and B's and A's, heck, let the A's retest. They're not going to get lower than an A anyway, so they'll even get better at it. And if, if I had been able to retest them, who knows what I would have been able to do. And I really wasn't as good as the other three teachers. They had years of experience. They really did teach well, but they wanted to have a life. So they didn't want to have to retest and spend four and a half to six and a half hours each test, which they weren't getting paid for. So uh, what I would like to do is, is come back to the States and do a tour of 365 schools, middle schools, high schools, colleges with teachers, with teaching departments. Um, and I have a couple of schools that thought I was actually in the States and they asked me to visit them. So um, I'm applying for fellowships, grants. So if anybody uh, has any, any connections with that and can, can tell me about that, I'm also looking at, at getting fellowships and grants to be able to do a tour of schools in the States uh, even Alaska and Hawaii, if they can get me out there, uh, to show that, that this, this, this is very dramatic results. And from a person who I know math, and sometimes knowing the subject really well uh, isn't a prerequisite for teaching it well. Although I have been teaching it since I was 13 to somebody every year, but not to a group of 13-year-old first-year puberty students in uh, places that had gangbangers. I actually had gangbangers in my, my class. Uh, who I was told to not not get upset. So um, they could probably handle a Glock gun better than I can handle my, my mobile. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And um, I have an email. I believe it's, uh, I didn't bring it with me. 
I believe it's get an algebra a at gmail.com, but uh, we will put something on the uh, YouTube as the actual email so that if you want to contact me uh, with uh, further questions, please do so. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, as Seneca said, luck is when opportunity meets uh, preparedness. So I've kind of prepared you now. So go out and uh, fight for your kids. Great. Thank you very much. Good night.